Guys, I am back, and I know it's been a while since I made a video because I've been traveling, and you don't want to see my mundane travels like booking a flight and going to the airport and eating airport food and getting on a plane or finding an empty seat in first class to steal and then getting kicked off the flight and starting the process all over again. Unless I started another YouTube channel, and what do I call it? Rich Travels? That sounds like agony. But I actually did a lot of this because, you know, I like weird cars. I found a GL Spectrum. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of a Geo Spectrum before, but Geo was a subsidiary of GM, and they made economical, easy-on-the-wallet, off-brand cars like the Prism and the Geo Metro and the Storm and the Tracker. But Geo went out of business 26 years ago. So when I was browsing Facebook and I saw this car, a Geo Spectrum, I immediately closed the window because this person had to be insane to charge this kind of money for a car that no one even wanted in 1989. But... It has the holy grail of high revving engines, a Suzuki Hayabusa engine. Someone decided to put a Hayabusa engine in a Spectrum. So not only can you be on the Spectrum, you could be in it too. Here's the only catch. The car is in Kansas and I don't live anywhere near Kansas. Also, for some reason, there are no reasonable direct flights to Kansas from where I am. So I have to fly to Chicago first and flights to Kansas are $1,000 for some reason. Does anyone know this? From Boston to Kansas, it's a grand if I don't want to leave at 3 a.m. Who is going to Kansas from Boston? But whatever. I really want this thing, so I'm going to fly to Kansas where you can have a really big house for not a lot of money. The only catch is that every few months, a tornado might destroy everything that you've worked hard for, which is a small price to pay to live next door to Hoovy. Now, the goal is to buy it. Drive it home from Kansas to Boston, which is a thousand dollar flight and 1500 miles. But I can drive this thing home for a mere 175 and a few days of my time. So, because I'm also looking for a place to move to, I decided to look at some Kansas real estate. I talked to both Hoovy and John Ross about Kansas real estate, and there are tons of places in Kansas, lots of room to park cars. This is one of the nicer homes in Kansas, actually. This is right next door to Hoovy, and there's a fireman pole in the middle of the living room, which makes it easier for emergency personnel. But you know what's even easier than having an emergency personnel pole in your house? Making a website with Squarespace. It's easy to claim a domain or URL like www.theworldsLargestBallOfTwineIsInKansas.com or www.inKansas, the average number of tornadoes per year, is 60.com. Every day for a summer. So then you can create a custom site that matches your style and enthusiasm. Check out these page templates because they'll make your web page look better than the looks people give you when you told them you just paid $1,000 to go to Kansas. Head to www.squarespace.com slash rich rebuild to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code in the description box below. Shout out to Squarespace for making platforms for people's passions no matter what they are. Pretty gangster. Uh, that, does that door not work? Oh, uh, there you go. Okay, cool, man. Thanks. I've never had to unlock the doors before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is what it's do. Look at what. Look at this thing, huh? Right. This so, is all done up. I don't know how to use the door locks because a lot of times I'm rolling through places that I shouldn't be with that music on. Yeah, I, I just, I, it seems so. I just leave them <laughs> locked. I leave them locked all the time. I'm surprised you have the window down even. <laughs> right. Jeez. All right. Let's see this thing. John Ross. Hey. Big dog. How you doing, man? Welcome to Kansas, man. Listen, you know what's funny? There's not a lot to do in Kansas. Well, I, I like I said, they scheduled the tornadoes for today or tomorrow, so you might get to see some action. Thank some you. Live action. Yeah, well, actually, I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow, so okay. probably probably perfect for me. Yeah. <laughs> perfect Awesome. Time. But, dude, this is your shop, man. Very nice, man. So this is your... You don't actually... Do you, you don't own this mini, do you? You don't like drive it at all. Are you partying out? Yep. This, this is for Go Recycling. This is this is for your little business. It here. is. This is not a plug or advertisement for uh, for John Ross's business, Go That's Recycling. Right. It is I not did that. Not pay for Rich's flight he, out here. He did not he fly, fly me out car. here. <laughs> he did. He didn't fly me out here. He didn't pay for the car. So I'm not going to advertise his business. But this is what he does. He recycle. What what kind of things do you recycle? Uh, I'm going to edit this part out. So you right. just wasting Minis, your time. Corvettes, uh, high performance GM, H2s. Stuff like that. All right, I gotcha. Yeah. And then you ship it all over here, huh? Yes, sir. Well, good for you. That's good. It's good to see a local small business person thriving in this economy. You <laughs> know what I mean? It is a small business. Just when you thought that it, YouTube sometimes just isn't enough. Right. 
it's not enough. So you have to do stuff like this. So here, John Ross is, everyone thinks that these YouTubers are making millions of dollars a year. But instead we're making $89 a day on a Ford Fusion. Maybe. Now we're making 90 bucks a day <laughs> recycling scrap parts, okay? So that, that's a common misconception about YouTubers. Speaking of YouTubers, let's yeah. look at this bundle of joy here. So there's the Geo Metro. The tracker. The, uh, the tracker, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then the, the fast the fast looking one. It's like, the I wanted to say it was a spark, but it's not. It's, it's no, yes. Storm. Those are actually very cool really looking cool. cars. Yes, the yeah. Geos. I didn't know they had Spectrum. So this I, is interesting. The Spectrum's really weird. So this car was bought by a friend of a friend's mom, new. It's a one owner. This is a one. This is a one owner car. One owner car from Tim's Auto Sale. Obviously, it wasn't originally. From they're Tim's. not. They're not in business anymore. There's no way. <laughs> there's no way Tim's there's still no, around. There's no way he's still around. Yeah. <laughs> if, if Tim, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, man. There's no, there's Wait, no way. You didn't last this it. long. Because this may be the only one I've ever seen. I've never seen a Spectrum. I've never seen this before. And you know, it, it's titled "Clean Title." Really? As a Chevrolet. But yeah, you got you got these Chevy hubcaps with your Geo badges. This is nice, man. I like this. I see the uh, there's a, the hoods in the back. Yeah, that's a nice hood. Look at these seats, man. We're getting to the good part, guys. I know I'm the word. It's a dramatic buildup. It is. They don't smell. Well, they kind of do. Is that beaver hair? Look how clean these <laughs> are, man. Minus the stains. M minus the part. I think this car went so fast, yeah. the seat turned brown at one point. Okay, apparently so. One of my favorite parts, obviously, the Hello Kitty steering wheel. But if you look at this carefully. You gotta look carefully. I don't know what this is, but that's for. So, I assume for roadside repairs. I like that. Because it's a 10 millimeter, isn't it? I, is think, it? I think it's a 10. Yeah, I Just what you need, a yeah. 10 and an 8. That's perfect. Yeah. So, ready? This is great. So, on... <clears throat> So John Ross, you know about McLaren ownership, right? Absolutely. So on the McLarens, when you're the sun visors, when you flip it down, it's it's this. It is. It's That's like, the sun. I think it's it's like that tall. That's the sun visor. Yeah. And, but this one, I think the sun visors in this are adequate, but this person didn't think so. They put a piece of shag carpeting, so it blocks out the entire. This is what you see. <laughs> it blocks out the entire road. It. So when you're looking and the sun's too bright, it's like nope. It's time to block everything. This is the cluster from a Hayabusa motorcycle. That's right. And yeah. this goes apparently 180 miles an hour. And revs to over 11,000 RPM. And we're gonna find out why in a second. We are going to find Let's out Let's take a look, take sure. a look-see. And what happened was the car went so fast. Look at the antenna, <laughs> come on. The antenna bent itself. I like, actually, where does this go? Oh, it goes in here probably. Let's I don't, yeah, let's that's see how, how far that, that goes. That was the end. It might actually end up cracking the uh, windshield. <laughs> but the magic of this is the Hayabusa engine under the hood of a 1989 Geo slash Chevy Spectrum. That's right. This is amazing. There is so much to talk about here. It's not even funny. I don't think this is a very good platform to have this engine in, Right. but I, I gotta give them credit where it's due. Right. If you look at the mounting for the engine, the welds were actually done very, very well. Very they, well. They even twisted the metal too. It's actually All pretty impressive. It. All of it has nice bends. This is very nice. This exhaust. It's a slip-on. It slip-on exhaust. Look at the, look how muted it is. <laughs> this is how this is how I'm yelling into this as loud as I possibly can. I believe See? you. Yeah. I think that's some O'Reilly's. That right is from there. O'Reilly's. This right is, off the exhaust shelf. This is a lot of the things were just kind of bolted to the back wall here. Correct. Obviously the fuses, the PCM, the self tappers, uh, the fuel pressure is it aeromotive. What is it? A Holly? It's a Holly fuel pressure. That's regulator? right. Look at that. This is amazing. The interesting part, what lawnmower do you think that came out of? Is it like a John Deere? Is it, is it a YCD? John Deere generally has a markup on their stuff, right? Uh, oh, and they wouldn't have paid the John Deere they would premium. Not. And usually the John Deere, it, they'll probably paint it green. Yeah. And, and then they'll charge it $275 for it. And you're unable to repair it yourself. And you can't, yeah. You, yeah. The manuals that you need to repair it, they don't allow you, which is why right to repair is very important. Guys, let's talk about right to repair just for a little bit. I actually wasn't kidding about the whole John Deere thing. Uh, it's well documented that they don't give customers the tools to fix their own vehicles. But because people kept pushing for it, they agreed to give its US customers the right to the fix their own equipment, which you figured they would have done that by now, right? It's a huge win. So I wanted to just keep encouraging people to fight for this stuff, uh, right to repair laws. They uh, empower freedom to choose how they repair and maintain their devices and equipment. Uh, it promotes a, a more sustainable and cost-effective approach. It allows local independent repair businesses to thrive like Electrified Garage. Remember that. Electrified Garage is an independent repair Tesla shop. 
uh, and it keeps the money in the community as opposed to these massive conglomerates. Uh, it means you could choose affordable repairs or even fix things yourself. And uh, it's really what my channel was founded on, uh, as well as a lot of other automotive YouTube channels out there. There's nothing for sale here. I just want to keep encouraging you guys to support the Right to Repair Act. You could sign petitions, contact your local lawmakers, and the, uh, the Auto Care Association is introducing a bill that would protect the right to repair or prevent vehicle manufacturers from holding on to data and information that prevents local repair shops or individuals from repairing their own cars, all right? Yeah, so just head to www.repairact.com in your browser right now to get more information. I'm under the impression that this thing probably didn't drive. You didn't really drive it yet, right? I have moved this forward and backwards okay. uh, at least five times. Okay. Uh, although there's no reverse, so you, you can only, reverse. Yeah, there's no reverse. You can yeah. only count half of that because, you know, half of it I'm using my feet. Yeah, very easy to push. Very easy to push. Look at that. Oh, that's not bad, actually. Yeah. But on a hill, that's probably not going to work. So pr well. Probably not. Okay, so... There's that, if you look up, they even have adjustability here. Absolutely. It's like a, it's like a, that's like the chain tensioner, isn't it? Is, it? it is a chain tensioner. That's amazing. And if you look at that chain, it's one of the biggest chains I've ever seen. Wait a minute. It's crazy, that chain must be an inch across. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's no, there's no slip. Yeah, there is no slip. That's not a thing that this car does. This is a fixed axle. So what'll happen is the wheels will both turn at the same speed. Uh huh. So this thing probably can't turn. I don't think it turns. Um, it makes popping noises if you turn the steering wheel. Just, it, it feels like it's falling apart, but it's not, don't worry, it's fine. If we try it and it doesn't, and it, you know, doesn't turn, we could just cut one of the axles off. We could, and you'd have one wheel drive, but it would be very successful. It would, it'd be at a one. sick burnout for that one wheel, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Well, it'd be a motorcycle again. <laughs> it'd be like yeah. all over again, right? That's um, right. Look at, dude, this is, look at this. That's nice. Look at that. That is fancy. It's nicely mounted too. Aluminum radiator. They put a lot of time and thought into this. This is, oh, that's the oil cooler back here. You got the oil cooler. Radiator, oil cooler. I mean, they put some time into it. I'm... Some other cool things is you see the shifter right there, right? To yeah. the stock motorcycle transmission. Cool. And you just zip tie the shift cable on and you're good. To be fair, those are very nice zip ties. Those are some thick zip ties. Those are very thick two zip ties. Two C's. So that's the gas. Yep. Uh, brake, and here's the clutch. There's a clutch. So with the Hayabusa uh, pickup truck that we built, it's significantly, it's lighter than this. Yeah. And it makes a lot more power because it's turbocharged and it's built. And the electric motor makes up for all the shortcomings of this drivetrain. Exactly, like reverse. Right, reverse right. is cool, yeah. Reverse is cool to have. So now with this one, it's naturally aspirated. It's making stock Hayabusa power. I don't know how it would do, especially with the clutch. Because yeah. the clutch isn't meant to... You should feel that clutch. Give it a, give it a... Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It is the hand clutch. It actually feels... Like a it hand... It is the hand clutch. It is the hand clutch. Look at that. <laughs> it's, you know, yeah. It's just welded on. Get on that. I can't... Yeah, you get a... That's a, actually a very good idea. It's pretty funny. I like that. I'm very excited to see you drive your cherry purchase all 30 hours back to Boston. It's going to be interesting. It's okay because... If the chain slips off, there's a chain tensioner. You just have to move the entire engine forward. To access the chain tensioner. Yeah, that's all you really need to do. That's right. This is actually perfect. Okay, so. Good luck. Thanks. Don't cut this. All right. I just want to see how long it takes you to get the key to work. It usually takes me about three minutes. <laughs> oh, there, oh, oh there he's, he's it, quick baby. with it, guys. It, he's quick right. with it. The guy who you bought it from yeah. said that you may need to crank it for up to like a minute straight. What? <laughs> I'm not kidding. What, I'm so there's kidding. an inch of fuel in every cylinder? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, just let it eat. I will say, sometimes it starts on the first, like, bump of the key, and right. then sometimes it's like, not today, not today. All right, we're gonna show you guys how long a minute is. Time it. <laughs> this is gonna be insane. All right, ready? I charged the battery for you, don't worry. This is uncomfortable. I know. <laughs> I can't it do really, a minute. It really is. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do <laughs> it's, it. It's hard on the starter. I can't. One more weird note about this car, I just want to let you know. Sometimes it seems like it starts on like one cylinder and then it slowly picks up the cylinders over the time. Yeah, three cylinders. Yeah, they just, they come online. Every minute. <laughs> Every minute. It's got to boot another cylinder up.
Get ready to go warp speed, man. You got 180 mile an hour on the dash. Yeah, you're straight. All right, ready? Clutch in and then down. Oh, wow. Yep. A lot of RPM to move it. You did it. <laughs> that may be as far as this car has ever driven. It shook the wheel down when you put it in gear. Just... That was the chain giving up. Yeah! I mean, I was sprinting to keep up with it. Hey, it, it, it even has auto start stop. I like it. <laughs> I love it. All right, we're going to take it for its first maiden voyage now. Unfortunately, again, there is no reverse. You have to uh, have a NASCAR crew with so you. So we have to have a NASCAR crew with us. Um, so you just pull the e-brake. See, the wheels are skipping. And the wheels are skipping because this it's not an open diff. Look at the wheels skip because the wheels are trying to go at the same time. It's so hard to push. But the brakes are actually turning the wheel. If you when you turn the wheel, it yeah, slows down. it does. I was gonna say, if you would, just drive through my yard. I don't wanna keep messing with this. Okay, those. yeah, okay, no just, problem. Just, I don't wanna, isn't there a ditch over there though somewhere? I don't wanna <laughs> get stuck forever. You ever had air before? Had air? You hit it fast. Yeah, <laughs> hit it hard, hit it fast. Okay, I guess let's go again. No hood. Is that legal in Kansas? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. First drive. Hold on, hold on. Once, honestly, I promise you, once it gets off the grass, it's going to be perfect. All right, you turn. I'll uh, look. Okay. Oh, so the chain's like just kind of chilling? Yeah, it's just laying down there. Okay. 
the chain's laying down there. So <laughs> that's, we're gonna, that's what chains do. That's it. Just sometimes, sometimes chains need to lay down. They needed a break. It's like crop circles. Yeah. Sometimes corn just needs to lay the f down. You know what I mean? That's it, man. All right. So, so now, so we just throw the thing in the trash now and call it a day. <laughs> I was gonna put the chain back on. All right. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. So we got the uh, chain back on with some clever engineering. That's right. Uh, it's still pretty loose, uh, and I think the problem was that when we were trying to turn at the same time, like you were saying, it's not rigid enough to actually yeah, deal think, with on a slop. I think the have. car turns without the engine. I think that like when you turn, the engine stays kinda, yeah. and the front end kind of moves just enough. So the whole thing the... shifts over pretty yeah, much. Just enough to move the chain. Yeah, so I mean, it's clever. Yeah. What, oh, yeah, what he the, did, very clever. The engine's definitely moving up right now. So once we get to the, when I run out of hand force here, I'll use my pliers and we'll add, Oh, also the top jam nut wasn't on. Yeah. So that probably let it back it, off. It kept loosening up. Yep, gotcha. I bet that was backing off of here. Okay, give me your opinion on this thing. What do you think? It, it looks like someone had a lot of really nice parts and yeah. an idea, and the execution was a bit of a stumble. The parts aren't cheap. No. The metal's not cheap, the, the fuel pressure regulator. The whole axle assembly, that's, you know, a thousand in parts brand new. Parts. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on there. No differential. No dip. That was too expensive. I'm thinking if we cut one of the axle shaft sides one off. Drive. Yep. One wheel drive. Like, what? One wheel peel. Old go kart style. It would Seriously. It. You I, gotta make. You gotta make one go and one break. So we gotta like disconnect the brake. On yeah. The, so it yeah. just kind of does like that. Uh, just a bunch of yaw. Even yeah. it out. It evens it out. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I think so too. I think we could. All right. Round two. What do you guys think? Let's do it. Try it again. It, the, the chain is way tighter. Way tighter. Okay. Good. But it's still gonna loosen because the top jam nut sure. isn't. Sure. It will. Okay. It is what it is. We did what we could. <laughs> we did what we could. We did our best. <laughs> Give a strap. Right, I'll go get one. Hold on one second. I might be able to wait. How's the chain doing? The chain's fine. The axle's on the ground. You can hear it clinking. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. I might be able to hold on. Ready? If that's the case, hold on. The CD broke. The CD. Hold on. Ready? Ready? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, you're good. All right, ready? Oh. What? Jake said both axles are broke now. Really? Yeah. Try to take off. No, it's not going anywhere. Nothing. Nothing. Both axles are broken. Oh, that'll do it. All right, I'll be right back with the truck. Okay. Or with this, I don't care.
Well, this was fun. I was like, what is he dragging on the ground? That doesn't yeah. have undershields or anything. And I realized it was the left axle bouncing on the ground. Oh. And then that corner back there, it, it kind of did this. Yeah. It's like, well, now there's two axles on the ground. Oh. And my third thought was, wow, that thing sure does roll for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a lot of rolling resistance on this thing. Huh? No, it's pretty good. Not this even a, a mile. Yeah, not even a mile, dude. Well, the guy that built it said, you know, he's like, it's not good. <laughs> He said it's, he said he had this idea in his head and how cool it was going to be. Dude, you found the one honest seller ever. <laughs> okay, well, he had all the torque going through. Look at that. Through a keyed shaft. That'll do it. Yeah, they just kind of sheared off, didn't they? I love I just love doing that. I don't know why. <laughs> we don't, really, really we don't need that where we're going. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> hey, spin that close. All right, bye. See, that's how that's how women are. Hey, listen, that's how no, that's how women are. The slightest inconvenience, and she drops in with the guy with the fancy car. Yeah, you see? Car. Look at this humble beginnings. Never forget, okay? <laughs> da 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 da. Ba, ba, ba. This is embarrassing. Did you find neutral? Uh, well, I have five neutrals now. If you look at this. Do you? The lever just goes back and forth, yeah. Oh, <laughs> dude. Well. Did I do good? Yeah, you did great. Maybe we just, uh, maybe we just put an end to this. Yeah, we leave that. End the suffering. <laughs> end, end, end the it. suffer. Just end it. All right, there we go. It was, it was fun, Hibusa. Thanks, big guy. Yep. You did good, that'll do, pig. I'm going to give this guy a lot of credit. This is actually pretty genius. I know we kind of briefly mentioned it before. But this is the uh, the hand clutch cable he turned into a foot lever. Look at that. That's what you'd normally squeeze on a bike with your hand. He just put a foot peg on it. And he mounted it with this plate. It still has the switch and everything. I gotta give him some credit, man. Again, John Ross and I were just talking about it. He actually didn't do a bad job. Good work. It's actually good work. Uh, only catch is there was a couple you know, minor engineering challenges he had, but... Um, I'd say the main minor engineering challenge is the engine should have been pushed forward and down. Yes. And then uh, some kind of diff or offset drive, and it would have been perfect forever. I think that's really what it, all it was, man. He, it just really not bad. We did it. Well, this isn't sketchy at all. This is not sketchy at all. Don't ignore all what you're seeing here. The we, angle was purposeful. What we want to focus on right now is the exhaust work. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's, he, he tried. It's no big deal. Well, not that big of a deal at all. Uh, my favorite There's thing. one tack on there. My favorite, like, first of all, that held. Right? Yeah, it actually did, yeah. Yeah, but this, where all the exhaust actually was just leaving before the yeah. muffler. It actually just, <laughs> <laughs> It's called a pressure relief valve. That's, that's all it right. was. That's yeah. Like PRV. Yeah, exactly. Good old PRV. Just an exhaust bypass. Man. So yeah, no, this is, I mean, this is it. Oh, let's look at this. So if you look, I, I, that's not straight. You can see it's kind of angled yeah, slightly this way. Absolutely super angled. Yeah. So that could be a lot of the- It's a half inch lower on the other side. Those bearing blocks held up. They did. It looks like it's all bent. It looks like even the... Yeah, oh, look, the sprocket's wobbling, Yeah, the too. sprocket was moving. That's what I was thinking. Yep. Yeah. But, you know, it's like that sprocket clamped onto the shaft. That's mm -hmm. not... Oh, and the key was coming out. Look yeah. at that. The key gave up and was pushing the metal out of the way. Fill up all of our cars. 
we usually just go to the mall and do this. Pretty much. Yeah, we'll have to, like, just jump the fuel pump and then I, just... We only do Mercedes, though, because they have premium in they it. They have, yes, exactly. Yeah. Or Escalades, Escalades or something like that. Yeah. It's the best way to get fuel. This is great. I love this. <laughs> I love everything about this. It's filtered, too. It's pure filtered fuel. I love it. What are you going to do with this now, this fuel? I don't know. If you just take it on the plane with you home, it's right? A it's, a loud, it's a loud pump, too. It is. Well, the pump is in line under the car. It's yeah, not, true. It's, it's not, not the in right the tank. Pump. Yeah. Guys, thank you for watching this episode. Clearly, the car didn't work out so well, so I have to take a plane back home, but I have plans for that engine. And next week, I'm going to try my luck again on another car in a different location. In the meantime, if you don't already know about it, pre-order my book. There's a link to it in the description box below. And I will see you guys next week.